Hi guys, it's Mr. B here. Uh, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm quickly going to go over the main types of work classes you need to know if you are uh, doing Satsu, Key Stage 2 Satsu at the end of Year 6 in England. Uh, I'm going to quickly go through them as quick as I can, so you've got a quick overview of all the different ones that will help you with your revision. Let's get started. So we're going to look at nouns. Uh, so quite simply, a noun is a naming word. And it's the name of place, person, thing, object, animal. Easiest way to remember it. And um, so we've got things like car, school, table, teacher, cat. Those are all the names of certain things. And we also have proper nouns, which are the names of specific things. We can easily see these because they have a capital letter at the start. But things like London, Mr. B, Big Ben, John. Okay, all those are specific things. That's a specific city, specific person, specific landmark, okay, specific clock type of, and specific person. Next one we're looking at is a verb. A uh, verb, quite simply, is a doing word or an action. Um, so things like swim, dancing, watch, fly, road, feeling and feeling sad, okay? So all things that you can do or an action that, that is being done, okay? Be careful. Some people think they're just ing words, but it depends what tense you're in. So we have road as past tense, feeling, present tense. Um, but we could have things like uh, he likes to watch, okay, so present tense as well. So they can change, don't have to have ing on the end. Got this one starred, these are ones that people can miss. Be, was, is, are, things like that, okay. The different um, tenses of to be, okay. And they're all things that you can do as well. So you can be something, it's something that you're doing. He was, it's something that he did do, okay. So these are verbs as well, so we need to remember with that. Now we're going to look at two different word classes that are linked to the ones we've just learned. We've got adjective and adverb. So an adjective is linked to nouns because it gives us more information or describes a noun. Okay, so we've got blue, stinky, large, long, majestic, gentle, buttery, wet, shiny, bizarre. So these come and tell us information about a noun. So the, um, the shiny car, the, um, the gentle giant, um, the long pool cue. Okay, it gives us information about that. Whereas an adverb, pretty much in the name, tells us more information about a verb. It can also be used to tell us more information about an, uh, an adjective or another adverb, okay? But the main thing you need to know is about more information about a verb, such as how, when, where, or how much a verb's been done, okay? We've got our LY words, which a lot of people recognise as um, adverbs straight away. Gently, quickly, um, and those ones, uh, mostly, sorry, those ones are easy to spot because they tend to tell us how something's been done, he ran gently, so run is our verb, gently's there. But then we've got other ones like yesterday, tonight, now, that's telling us when. He ran yesterday, he ran tonight, he is going to run tonight. Um, and then we also have things like where, outside, inside, he ran inside, he ran outside. It's modifying the verb. Um, and then obviously, uh, how much, so he mostly ran at the weekend. He always runs, okay? So that tells us more about a verb. Now we've got another word that's linked to nouns, and that is pronouns. Again, it's in the name, so it helps us. Um, and these are basically used to replace nouns, okay? So it makes a sentence sound a little better. So we've got his, hers, she, the, he, it's, okay? If we were saying a sentence and repeating the same thing over again, so I said, uh, Mr. B was making a video and Mr. B talked too long on it, it sounds a bit strange to keep saying Mr. B. So what we say is, Mr. B uh, uh, recorded a video and he, talked too much okay so it's replacing the noun of mr b with that word so that's what proper now uh, so pronouns are please don't get them mixed up with proper nouns because you are quite close around with proper nouns specific place that'll have a capital and here we are looking at determiners now determiners identify the noun or determine which noun we're talking about tells us which noun is being written about um comes before a noun and the most common determiners you found are what we call articles, which are the, a, and am. Okay, so let's go back to tell us which noun. Okay, so we're talking about a noun. Um, so, so we see some uh, books. You could see a few books, which so tells us um, a little bit more about it. His books, that's what we call a, possess a possessive one. That book, our book, many books. And then also uses question questions. Which books are you trying to find out specifically which uh, noun, uh, what the noun is that we're talking about, whose book, okay? So they identify which actually now we're talking about. So we've got book and we have our determiner to let us know which one we're talking about, okay? 
Now, prepositions are where something is in time and space, okay? That just means sort of like where or when something is. So something could be under, over, beside, on, against, or something could be happens before, happens after. So they basically happen before, um, sorry, where or when something is, where it is in time and space, okay? Now, what you might have noticed when you're looking at these is a lot of these words can be used as more than one thing because some of these could be adverbs. Don't worry about that. When you when words are used in different ways, they can be used different ones. Sometimes it can be two different types of word class. Sometimes it depends how they use decides their word class. Now we're looking at conjunctions and what they're used for is to join two different clauses, whether they be main, subordinate, and whatever. Um, and we have subordinate clauses that joins a main clause to a subordinate clause. So we have things like because, as, despite, that, since. And um, when we add those, they make complex sentences. And then we also have coordinate conjunctions. What they do is join two main clauses and make compound sentence. And that is just this list here. The what we call fanboys to remember. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. This list, there's a lot more, but that are the only coordinate conjunctions that we have. So there you have it, that should be all the word classes that you really need to revise up on for your KCH2 SATs or if you're in uh, year three, four, five, six. Those are the ones that you're gonna have to really remember. Now, like I say, there's lots of those there where words can be more than one different word class. Don't worry, when you get the questions, it's normally quite clear which ones they're using if it is in tests. Uh, if you know all those ones and you know them inside out, it would really help you with your uh, uh, punctuation and grammar test. Hope you found that video useful guys and if you have please give it a thumbs up. Uh, hit subscribe if you haven't already, you'll get notifications of any videos that I put up as and when I do. Please share it if you know anyone that will benefit from this and find it useful. And if you've got any questions or anything, comment or use the Twitter or the Facebook page. Till next time, see you later.